Bronze B Metal Coating. Today we're going to apply some Bronze B Metal Coating to a life cast sculpture cast up in HydroCal. Now the two main Sculpt Nouveau materials we'll be using today are the Bronze B Metal Coating and the Tiffany Green Patina. Now to start with, you always want to make sure you suspend the bronze powder in the metal coating very well by shaking it before you start painting. Bronze is very dense and it will settle out. The other thing is you want to make sure you use a, a good brush and if all you have is some of these disposable chip brushes, just make sure you pull loose any little uh, hairs or fibers off the brush that might get stuck in the paint. Now to start with, we're just going to brush on an even coat of bronze bee all over the sculpture. And you'll find that it takes a very small amount of bronze paint to get a, a very good coating all over. One of these small 8 ounce jars of bronze bee goes a long way. So you want to be careful not to over apply here. It just takes a little bit applied to the surface to get a really nice bronze look. Now you'll notice this is a, a hydrocal sculpture here that uh, we pulled out of a silicone mold. Uh, so it doesn't have any mold release on it, nothing on it that's going to get in the way of our paint sticking to the piece. So that's a, an important consideration. Whatever you're working over, you need to make sure it's free of any kind of release or any kind of surface oil that will cause the bronze bee to not stick to the surface. Now, Hydrocal has a nice porous surface that allows the metal coating to really lock in good and really bond to that surface. Now once we brush that all over the surface, we're going to come back in and remove our brush strokes. And I do this just by tapping out the brush strokes by uh, stippling the surface with a brush to get rid of those brush strokes and get a slightly textured effect. Now you could also use a natural sea sponge for this process. Um, you can play with this effect and, and get all kinds of different uh, looks and textures by dabbing on uh, either using a natural sea sponge or a paper towel or a brush like this. Just keep in mind that doing this will ruin the brush. So a lot of times after I'm done with a coat like this, that brush goes to brush heaven. Now we're ready for the second coat. After our first coat dries, we're going to apply a second coat. And on that second coat is where we're going to apply our patina while it's still wet. So the first thing we need to do before we start applying any bronze bee is make sure that we've got some patina solution ready to go. And here we're using the uh, Tiffany Green Patina. And we want to make sure we put this in a spray bottle. And I always use a fresh spray bottle when I start this process. Uh, the metal spring in these spray bottles will erode very fast when you're using a, a very powerful patina like a, a Tiffany Green or the Light Green Patina. Both of those will rust that steel spring very fast. So it's always a good idea to change out those bottles. I get mine from uh, discount stores for about a buck a piece and they're good for a couple of days and then I throw them out. Now we're ready to apply our second coat of Bronze B. Now just to give you an idea here, we let the first coat dry about 30 minutes before we applied the second coat and that dry time in between coats is going to depend on where you're located. If you're in a cool damp environment it's going to take a lot longer for the paint to dry than if you're located in a warm dry environment. So for example if you're working in Arizona you're going to have a very fast dry time. If you're working in Florida it, it might be a little slower. So keep that in mind when you're working with this. There's no finite number as to when you can apply that next coat. It just needs to be dry to the touch. And you'll also notice that when you brush it on and stipple out those brush strokes, as the paint dries, it shrinks just a little bit, which, uh, which softens that texture that you applied a little bit. So it takes some practice with this to get a feel for what your finished piece will look like. You've got to be able to kind of predict a step or two ahead and know what the brush is going to do. So it's a good idea to experiment with some different stippling techniques before you decide what you're going to do over your actual piece. Now again, here's our second coat. We brush that all over the entire Hydrocal sculpture and then we're stippling that out. You'll notice we've got that slightly textured surface going on there. Now we're using this stippling effect but we could also spray that on for a smooth surface. Uh, using an HVLP sprayer. Just keep in mind that uh, when you use a spray gun and you have that really smooth finish, sometimes it takes a little bit longer for the patina to react since you don't have quite as much surface area for the patina to react with. 
Now we're just going to spray on our Tiffany green from all different angles and we don't want to over apply that. We just want to spray on a, a mist from all different directions and then let it react. Now here you're going to see the Tiffany green develop over about an hour. Uh, we had a, a, a nice day today of about 75 degrees with uh, reasonable humidity. So we were able to get a good reaction uh, pretty fast here. Now keep in mind we can continue to let this turn, but right now we've decided to stop at the point we're at now and we're going to do some dry brushing using some more Bronze B. Now what I do when I'm dry brushing the Bronze B over that surface like that is I like to get a little bit on a piece of white cardboard and brush it out until I have a minimal amount left on the brush just to make sure we don't over apply it at this step. It's really critical here to get this effect of bronze showing through that oxidized surface that we just use this technique very sparingly. And when done properly you get a really nice effect of slightly aged bronze. And we're just going to hit the highlights. Again, areas that would naturally abrade or uh, be exposed to uh, the elements. We, we want the recessed areas to retain that uh, oxidized bronze look and we want any of the high points to look like uh, slightly abraded bronze or new bronze there. And again, it takes some practice to get this down. It's a good idea when you're starting out with some of these techniques to use a small sample piece and work it the same way you're going to do your sculpture just to get a feel for how these materials go on, how they react, and get a feel for uh, what kind of surface finish you're going to wind up with. Now once we've applied that all over again we want to let that dry and then we want to come back and seal that because in order to keep that patina from spreading and further developing into an even richer green, which would, it will do over time, uh, we're going to apply a, a clear coat or a top coat to stop everything. Now it's critical when you're using reactive patinas like the Tiffany Green to make sure you have a good stop switch for that uh, reaction so you don't wind up with everything just being one homogeneous green color. So what we're going to do is apply a top coat of clear guard over the top of the piece here. Want to make sure everything's dry to the touch, and we usually let that dry for a good hour before we apply the clear guard. The clear guard is specifically designed to stop UV rays and uh, prevent corrosion. So by applying a good couple of coats of clear guard over the top, you'll notice it subdues the patina just a little bit, but it will preserve that finish and keep any kind of oxidizing from spreading. And that's again critical anytime you're working with a reactive patina. So a couple of coats of clear guard and we have a finished piece. Now at this point we could leave our sculpture as is. We have a, a nice looking classical bronze piece or we can age it a little bit more. Now what we're going to do is come in here with some of the Sculpt Nouveau black wax for bronze and copper and we're going to apply some black wax. Now what this will do is kind of cheat the effect of liver of sulfur and darken some of these areas. Now you'll notice we did the, the order we did this here. We applied the uh, clear guard first and then we're applying the wax over the clear guard and that's critical because once you apply wax you really can't do much else to a piece. So you want to make sure if you do any wax work over the top that you always apply your top coat first. So apply your clear guard, two or three coats of that, make sure that has adequate dry time, and then go on top of that clear guard with your waxes when you're working with this process. Now what I want to do here is I just want to uh, create again the look of just a kind of a classic bronze look with some oxidization going on and some aging going on. So what I want to do is just wipe that off the surface so I leave some of the black in some of the recessed areas. And keep in mind that the Sculpt Nouveau wax will cure after about four or five hours to a very hard wax that's very difficult if not impossible to remove. So make sure that you do this very quickly, that you brush it onto the surface and then wipe off any excess that you don't want because once it dries it is there to stay. And there we have it. There's our finished sculpture. We can go back in with a soft cloth and buff it out a little bit, shine up some of those uh, bronze areas, 
And there you have it, the basic application of the bronze B metal coating over a hydrocal sculpture.